Welcome everyone, this is George Gale, and I bring you another video about how your favorite servants would fare in an actual Holy Grail War, and what strategies you can use to maximize your chances at winning it. For these videos, only servants that appear as playable in FGO and A will be included. This means that any servant that has yet to appear in the NA server, or servants that have appeared but are not playable yet will not be included. And since we'll be talking about chances, we'll be going through the lowest rarities to the highest and in alphabetical order. If you missed my previous video where I discussed how good Arish would be in an Holy Grail War, you can check that video right here. And without further delay, let's move on to the next servant. We all love this big boy of debuffs, Asterios, or more commonly known, Minotaur. Asterios in-game is normally a good option for free-to-play players who want to build debuff teams that reduce enemies' damage so much that they might as well be attacking with wet noodles because that's how little damage they are going to be doing after Asterios has used his noble phantom a good amount of times. But would he be as good in a real Holy Grail War? The answer may surprise you. There's actually a lot of talk about Asterios, however, it's important to get the skills and stats out of the way first, as they do reveal a lot about how a specific servant is best used. Since he is a Berserker, he has this skill Mad Enhancement, which increases all his parameters while taking away his sanity. In practice, this means that it's expected as a Berserker for Asterios to have high stats. As for his sanity, we'll leave that for later. Moving on to his first personal skill, Monstrous Strength, which overall grants him more stat buffs, although only for his strength parameter. It's a really straightforward skill, since Asterios is the Minotaur, he is a monster and thus has the strength adequate for one. His next skill is called Natural Monster, which again is another buff to his stats, in this case for his strength and endurance. In game, it also provides resistances to attack debuffs. This is likely a reference to how Asterios is considered a magical beast, and these creatures tend to have some form of resistance to mysteries to some degree. As for Asterios, I'll be considering for the purposes of this video that this skill also grants him some form of resistance to debuffs. A minor plus, but overall should not change the course of a battle. And his last skill, Labrys of the Abyss, is… well, his axis. It was originally a two-sided axe, but he turned it into two axes. To be honest, there's really not much to this. In game, it increases your crit and buster, so for the purposes of this video I'll consider it's another skill that increases a serious damage output. As for his stats, while at first glance they look insane, it's expected for berserkers to have stats this high. That said, there is one stat that is worrying, his agility is low for a berserker. Remember, all the stats you are looking at are already buffed up by Man Enhancement, meaning that his actual agility is absolutely dreadful. This means that Asterios is pretty much a bulldozer. He's not the fastest, but he's pretty durable, and if you can't get out of the way, or he catches you by surprise, he will flat you like a bug with his ridiculously high strength. Overall, Asterios is the definition of a beat stick. All his skills are directed to his strength, and that's pretty much it. However, his Noble Phantom is much more interesting. Asterios can summon the Labyrinth where he lived pretty much for his entire life, and not just that, what he actually summons is the concept of the Labyrinth itself, meaning that every time he uses his Noble Phantom, a new completely different Labyrinth can appear, meaning that even if you manage to escape it, if he summons it again, there's a chance that it's a different labyrinth. This labyrinth will also only disappear when either Asterius dies or his opponents either escape or die, meaning that once he deploys it, most servants are forced to hunt down Asterius in the labyrinth to be able to leave it. Since it's also a reality marble, I'm going to assume that it works like Iskanders and Emias where they can move around the people pulled into the reality marble as it's manifesting. In other words, Asterios is a beat stick 
they can force his enemies into death battles where nobody from the outside can interfere. While that does sound promising, that only works if the enemy is weaker than Asterius. That said, he's not to be underestimated. While he can only do one thing, he can do that one thing pretty well, as he was able to hold off Medea, Robin Hood, and a son of the Cursed Hand by himself. And finally, we have probably the biggest factor, his sanity. While Asterius is insane, you can actually establish communication with him, and overall, if you're not a prick or an idiot, Asterius will probably be one of the chillest berserkers that you can summon. That said, his intelligence is comparable to that of a child's, although he's also wise, meaning that while he's not smart, he does have experience in life and can pull off many things that even adults can find difficult to do. So, with that said, if you were in a Holy Grail War and you summon Asterius, would you be well off or dead on arrival? Well, it's complicated. He's not the best, but he's also not the worst. The problem with Asterios is that he is too simple, meaning that you have one plan, and if it works, awesome, if it doesn't, well, you're dead. He's a beat stick, he beats people up, and if the people can withstand his attacks or outright avoid him, then he's pretty much toast. By far, his greatest weakness is his lack of skill. Asterios is like a raging bull who's swinging his axes around. If he hits, that's pretty much a kill on most servants, but the problem is hitting and also not dying in the process. That said, his noble phantom does open up some possibilities. Asterios can trap servants who might be difficult to deal with and then try to catch them by surprise inside the labyrinth. Just be aware that once he uses his noble phantom, it isn't going to go away until either Asterios or his enemies die. So, if you have Asterios, what can you do to improve your odds at winning the Holy Grail War? Well, the first thing you'll need to do is treat Asterios as another person. Do not treat him like a tool. Asterios is one of the calmest berserkers that you can summon. If you treat him well, he'll behave much like an oversized kid who's experiencing the world for the first time. Treat him like a tool, and you'll get the Minotaur monster who only cares about his hunger and will eat you if you get in his way, or if there's nothing else to eat around. While the Minotaur monster does bring more power, overall, you don't really want a red engine monster who eats people willy-nilly. Even in the case that you're a sociopath who doesn't care, the other servants, masters, and the church definitely will care and will all target the Minotaur. So it's better to just keep him in his fluffy boy form. As for tactics, you'll be hard-pressed to do anything in general. Overall, your best option is to team up with someone else. Ideally, they would be someone weaker so that when you eventually have to face them, you could easily beat them. Teaming up with someone makes Asterios Labyrinth much more useful as Asterios can pull his enemy plus his ally for a guaranteed 2v1. Alternatively, Asterios can also pull the master and have his ally kill the master while Asterios keeps the enemy servant at bay. Of course, this strategy has the weakness of being vulnerable to backstabs. If Asterius summons his enemy and ally to the labyrinth, there's nothing stopping his ally from switching sides and now Asterius is the one under pressure. That said, there's not much else that you can do. You can try using assassination by having Asterius drop a master away from their servant, but the master could just use a command spell to regroup, making the attempt a failure. Learning about your enemies will also be difficult as Asterius doesn't really bring any utility in that direction, so you pretty much only have yourself to rely for scouting any enemies. You also can't hope to wait it out, since if you end up being among the last two masters, the enemy will most likely be a knight class servant like Saber or Lancer. Not only that, it will be hard for you to hide from battle when you have such a large servant who's going to act like a child in many situations. So what's the verdict? In general, the only thing that you can do with Asterios is steamroll through your enemies and hope that another more powerful servant wasn't summoned, because if they were, there's very little that you can do that can give you a chance at winning. His noble phantom can let him pull some unexpected kills on stronger enemies, but you should really only look at it 
as a method to secure a kill or force a command spell from an enemy master. So Asterios, I'll give him a C rank. He can definitely overwhelm the average servant thanks to his high stats, but his lack of options make him pretty much one dimensional. He's either going to flat his enemy or he's going to be killed by the enemy. Overall, all it takes is a servant with a strong level phantom or a servant who's skilled at fighting monsters and has high agility and Asterius can't do much. So while you're not in the worst position, you're also nowhere near as safe as you might want to be. And that concludes for this video. Next one should be up in a few days and I'll be talking about a strange American myth. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any videos and to like if you enjoyed it. Also, leave any comment if you agree or disagree with me or if you think that I forgot anything. Bye!